Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us again. Another discipleship review um, of our session from Saturday. Just some, some thoughts um, to share, to accompany your reading as you're reading along with us. Um, so this Saturday, we talked about Ezekiel chapter 11, uh, verses 2 through 4, 14 through 21. And if you didn't read all the chapters leading up to it, you really missed <laughs> piece. Um, the overall context, um, especially when, as you get into chapter 11, um, God is telling Ezekiel that there will be a remnant of Israel that is saved, that is returned Um and that is that's good news. That's good news for him to hear and to know. Um, however, you really if you if you're reading it and you're hearing God's heart in these these verses, in the the ministry and the message that he gives to Ezekiel, he's really trying to to get across this idea that he wants Israel to change. And in that, if you if you read it, you can't help but notice God repeats over and over and over again. And even, I mean, up until chapter 11, you'll see it. And even going forward, you'll continue to see it and hear it. He'll continue to say, I'm doing this. I'm going to allow these things so that Israel will know that I am the Lord. Over and over and over, he uses this phrase because he wants them. That's his objective. His objective is not to destroy and wipe Israel off the face of the map. He could do that. He would have been justified if he did it. But that's not the goal. The goal is to get them to recognize he is God. He is the reason that, that they were there in the first place. He's the reason that they've had the you know the prosperity that they that he allowed them to have he wanted to be acknowledged that he was their god and have them have a heart that would actually um, be be open to him listen to him hear what he's trying to tell them the direction he's trying to take them in and so again that's just one of those points even as you continue to read um I hope that we all see that it's God's heart not to just do, I mean, he says some harsh things. He allows some, some harsh realities for Israel, but it is not to destroy them. It is not to get rid of Israel. It's to get rid of the wicked heart that's in Israel and allow that heart to be focused on him. So, I, and just to throw it in, I think, he operates much the same way today that mm -hmm. sometimes he allows things, you know, that he allows things to happen to his people. He allows circumstance to come up in our lives and it is not for the intention of destroying us. It is for the intention of us recognizing that no matter what comes, he is God. So that was just, just a quick note. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. Um, you know, just sometimes we, like it's, God has, sometimes he, he does things out of our control, things that we can't handle, just so that we can realize like, oh, like it's God. Like I, I can't do this. I can't solve this. I can't fix this. Like I need God, you know. Um, but yeah, no, those, those are great points. And I think just understanding that piece helps you understand the rest of Ezekiel better because you're right. not looking at it from this point of view of like God being this mean, bad God allowing this to happen to his people. But you see, this is God getting his people to recognize that he is God. He is the one God, you know, right. um, the thing that, that I was looking at uh, when looking at this lesson was just kind of the beginning part where it talks about judgment on the wicked counselors. And these were people in a position of power, leadership, who were leading um, Israel, leading the people. And these people um, 
were doing things they shouldn't have been doing, uh, serving God they shouldn't have been serving, and kind of leading people in that direction. And it, it's an interesting thought process behind what these leaders were doing because uh, at this time, uh, some of the people of Israel were already in captivity. They were like, like two, um, there were two sieges, two kind of quests of coming, capturing Israel and taking them like back to Babylon. Mm -hmm. And so this is the last group that's left. And their thought process was, okay, so we're the last group left here in Israel. So God is with us. Like God has took, <laughs> taken away all the evil people and God has left us because God is with us because we're not in captivity. We're here. We're still in the land. And so God must be with us. And so they started to, you know, the houses, everything that was left behind from the other people who had already been taken away, they started to feel like God had left this for, th for them. Like, no, we're good. God has kept us here. God has left us all these resources from all the bad people. So we are good. And it's just, it's an interesting thought process and concept. Like they're serving all these wicked, evil gods, but they still feel like God is with them. They're, they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing, leading people astray, but they still feel like God is with them and God has blessed them to stay in this land. And, and it's just, you know, that thinking behind it, I think sometimes people deal with that today. Like they feel like because God hasn't done anything to them, yet like they're okay with god like god is pleased with them god has blessed them to have everything that they have um you know like I say people who are you know doing bad things um you know maybe obtaining things the wrong way if like no god is god has blessed me to have this um like i i, I got he gave me the money i i know I'm, i didn't get it the right way but he gave me the money to be able to do this right and just you know that that thinking behind that, you know, although you are uh, doing wicked things, doing evil things, to still feel like God is with you and God is not with the people who he's taken away or the people who are dealing with their consequences, you know, because God, he says he's actually with the people who had already left. Right. I was right. still with them. Um, God was, was with them in Babylon. He wasn't with the people who were still left in Israel, but in their minds, they thought, they were the good ones because God left them there. And so that was just an interesting thought to me um, to, to see and read about that. And that just kind of ties in that whole piece and, and part where he's talking about like the, the fire and the hot and the iron pot and the meat. Like, you know, it comes kind of cooking and stuff like that. They felt like they were the they were the meat. They were protected mm -hmm. in the pot. And so they would they would be OK. Um, but they figure out later that they, they weren't the meat. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was just an interesting piece. To uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, just a, a couple of just quick points. Um, our emphasis in uh, these discipleship sessions is not for myself or Richard or Minister Harvey to to overshare. And so, you know, we'll kind of, on Mondays, we may share a point or two, but we invite any of you who are watching these videos, if you have the 45 minutes to spend with us Saturday morning, um, we really invite you to, to come. Come on Zoom, uh, share with us. It really is about um, creating this space for you to share your understanding of God's word for you to um, let us know how God's word has impacted you. And so you see the information on the screen. Um, it's Saturday morning, 930. You are out of this Zoom session by 1015. That is our number one goal. If we don't, <laughs> if we don't have any other goal, we want you to be done by 1015. We know Saturday mornings can be busy. Um, other than that, um, our our lesson for next week, um, do you have it, Rich? I believe it was Ezekiel chapter 20, 20 1, 1 through, through 14. 14. Yes, Ezekiel chapter 20, 1 through 14. Um, so 
if you have one of our discipleship guides, you can follow, follow along with us. Please answer the questions that are in the discipleship guide. That's what we will um, try to build the discussion around the questions that are in the book. Um, so yeah, come prepared. That's, that's the word, come prepared. I'm gonna prepare. Richard, I guarantee you is gonna prepare. Minister Harvey is gonna prepare. All of us, if we all come prepared, we can have great discussion. So anything else, Rich? That's it. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us for this quick review. Um, and we'll try, if we can, to check in with you all later in the week. Just uh, make sure you are ready to go on Saturday. Have a great rest of your Monday, though.